Hi there. This is Monica. Did you know that the Philippines is one of the first nations in the world to come up with an anti-bullying law? Yes, you heard it right. But what is anti-bullying law all about? Let's find out. Republic Act No. 10627 entitled an act requiring all elementary and secondary schools to adopt policies to prevent and address the acts of bullying in their institutions was enacted with an aim to help curb bullying incidents in elementary and secondary schools in the country. The act originated from the House of Representatives, amended by the Senate, and then finally passed both the lower house and the Senate on June 5, 2013. The bill was signed into law by President Benigno Aquino III on September 12, 2013. So what is bullying? Well, bullying, as defined by the law, is any severe or repeated use by one or more students of a written, verbal, or electronic expression, or a physical act or gesture, or any combination thereof directed at another student that has the effect of actually causing or placing the latter in reasonable fear of physical or emotional harm or damage to his property. Any act that creates a hostile environment to the student and that infringe his right at school is considered bullying. Examples of bullying are physical, punching, pushing, shoving, kicking, slapping, tickling, headlocks, inflicting school pranks, teasing, fighting in the use of available objects as weapons. Social or emotional, or any act that causes damage to a victim's psych or emotional well-being. Verbal, Directing foul language or profanity at the target, name calling, tormenting, and commenting negatively on victims' looks, clothes, and body. Cyberbullying or bullying through the social networking sites, cell phone, or any means of technology. The term bullying also includes social bullying or bullying by repetitive, aggressive social behavior intended to hurt another individual and gender-based bullying, or any act that humiliates or discriminates a person on the basis of perceived sexual identity. All elementary and secondary schools, may be private or public, and even kindergarten, are all required to adopt policies that aim to address the existence of bullying in their institutions. These policies shall be updated regularly and shall include the following provisions. Prohibition of acts of bullying within or outside of school premises and through the use of electronic devices and retaliation against a person who reported or has information about bullying. Administrative disciplinary action towards the perpetrator depending on the gravity of the act and rehabilitation which must be joined by his or her parents. Clear procedures and strategies about reporting of and responding to an act of bullying, restoring safety of the student, protecting the bully from retaliation, and pro providing counseling. Anonymous reporting of act of bullying provided that no disciplinary action shall be taken against the accused on the basis of anonymous report alone. Disciplinary action for a student who makes a false accusation about bullying. 
educating the students about the dynamics of bullying, the policies and mechanisms of the school concerning bullying. Educating the parents and guardians about the dynamics of bullying, the school policies about bullying, and how to reinforce it at home. Maintaining a public record regarding acts or incidents of bullying in school provided that the names of parties concerned are strictly confidential. The anti-bullying policy should prohibit the following. Bullying within or adjacent the school grounds, Bullying in school programs or functions, whether it's in or out of the school. Bullying in school buses or any school vehicle. Bullying in privately owned buses accredited by the school. And bullying in school bus stops. It also includes bullying through the use of any means of technology or social media and retaliation against a person who reports bullying. The anti-bullying policy also includes prevention and intervention programs that both public and private schools shall adopt. These programs aim to address the influences, factors, and effects of bullying and prevent them. The principal or designated officer shall oversee the implementation of the policies and will act as a point of contact to whom a witness of the act of bullying shall report to. The principal or designated officer is responsible for conducting an investigation and notifying the school administrator of the involved student or students who are from a different or another school upon receipt of report of act of bullying. Once determined that an act of bullying or retaliation occurred, the principal or designated officer shall do the following. Notify the law enforcement agency if the school principal or designee believes that criminal charges under the revised penal code may be pursued against the perpetrator. Take appropriate disciplinary administrative action. Notify the parents or guardians of the perpetrator and notify the parents or guardians of the victim regarding the action taken to prevent any further acts of bullying or retaliation. Both elementary and secondary schools are directed to submit a report containing statistics or other relevant information about the acts of bullying in their institutions to their respective school division superintendents. This shall be done every first week of the start of school year. The school division superintendent is expected to submit the compilation of data from these reports to DepEd, and the latter will likewise submit a compilation of the reports to Committee of Education. For non-compliance of this law, it is the DepEd secretary who shall prescribe an administrative sanction to the non-compliant school administrator, including that of private schools. In addition, the private school's permit to operate may get suspended. DepEd Secretary Armin Luistro considers Anti-Bullying Act of 2013 as the biggest achievement for the agency in 2013. In an article by Manila Bulletin, he quoted, The Philippines is one of the first nations in the world to even come up with a law on bullying including features of cyberbullying. It is an imperfect law, and the IRR will not be able to anticipate all the problems and challenges, but I think it is a milestone. Miguel David C. Tan, the publishing editor of Outreach Magazine, however, noted the apparent lack of stress on the bullying done by some schools or school administrators against the LGBT community. Thus, he advised students, particularly LGBT Filipinos, to utilize the law as it is supposed to protect them only if it is actually applied.